inherently, I think real estate people, be the developers or managers, we are the kind of animals that respond to the carrot far better than we would ever respond to the stick. Uh, we like incentives. We are much more prone to green up properties, uh, take, you know, make capital investments to do those things to improve the properties, and the things that we all want to do. We, you know, we all want to make our properties very efficient. We want to be uh, players and cooperators in the green area, but uh, we also have the responsibility as fiduciaries to work for a bottom line for the investors and the owners uh, for whom we manage. And so any time that there is an incentive, whether it's local incentives from utility companies or whether it's tax incentives for owners to reinvest into those types of technologies that will green up properties, that will always be met with much uh, more welcome arms than any type of a government mandate stating you will do this by this date and uh, it's, it's just inherent in the nature of who we are. We're entrepreneurs and so people in the real estate business cherish those kind of opportunities to be able to have a motivation and a reason to improve things. But we probably don't like to be told that we have to and we have to do it by this date. We've been through the housing crisis, so much of that has already hit the fan and is being dealt with. And you know, lenders, uh, you know, have have resources with companies and people that are able to actually just secure a property, make sure that the place is locked up, boarded up, and and uh, and the, the lawn gets mowed occasionally. But what they aren't equipped to do is manage commercial properties. And right now, we're really just seeing the momentum of commercial defaults finally starting to come to fruition. Uh, our own company, we've had a couple of invitations uh, just in the past couple of months. One from an insurance company, one from a, a group of banks to take over uh, commercial projects. And these opportunities are very unique. It, it's not like when a, a, a change of a management contract happens with a transaction and a sale of a property and you inherit the prior owner's records and uh, there's a nice orderly exchange of information. This is hostile territory when a lender takes back a property or a court steps in and appoints a receiver. And it takes a very special skill level. We believe people that are qualified professionals in the property management business, preferably, the, preferably those that are uh, credentialed as certified property managers to be qualified to step in and really on an emergency basis get their arms around the asset. These new uh, accidental owners, uh, these lenders that are taking these properties back, seldom know anything about what they've got other than what they can see from driving by and standing in the parking lot. We find that we have to step in and in very short order build a rapport with the tenants, uh, frequently get copies of leases, find out their payment status, are they current in their rent payments, uh, what about services to the property. Uh, when these things go to foreclosure, those lenders that are getting these properties back, they don't know if tenants are paying rent, they don't know if the utilities are about to be shut off. There's a lot of this kind of work that has to be done very quickly, uh, very professionally, and in a way that you can uh, bond and establish a relationship with the tenants of these properties and uh, gain their trust and confidence. We, we are in our uh, over 90 years as a, as a family business moving into our fourth generation and those times during the depression were a very challenging uh, time, a matter of survival, and yet they became a period of great opportunity. Although it was no quick fix, uh, my grandfather got involved in servicing the properties uh, from our primary banker uh, that they had foreclosed on. And they had hundreds of these properties that uh, were stuck on their books, that they were burdened with. And uh, he established himself as, as the, a partner with them and a solution to their problem and spent 
the better part of 15 or 20 years revitalizing this real estate portfolio, uh, which also led to some opportunities to redevelop some of these properties and was really the catalyst to get our family business involved in real estate development beyond just the brokerage and management that we had done at that time. And I look back over these years and the, and the 30 uh, plus years that I've been uh, active in my career and we've ridden these waves up and down. Real estate always has been cyclical. It always will be. This wave has just been, uh, the undertow from this wave has been a little stronger than what, what most of the past ones have been. But we have found that uh, by being conservative, by being very stable in our operations, and by maintaining absolutely immaculate credit, that we've been able to weather these storms and come out of them. It's not always pleasant uh, when times are tough, but we've found that we have been in a position where we can come out when the markets turn, and turn they will. Uh, they always do, and they will again. Things will improve, and we hope to again remain in a position where we're ready to take off and really take advantage of them. Uh, I don't think we'll see the overheated growth, the extreme leverage and the extreme inflation that we've been through for the past several years, frankly I think that's a good thing. The real estate world has been forced to come back to basics and look at fundamentals. Owners and investors are not going to be able to drive their returns by leverage and inflation. It's going to be from the wise and efficient operation of real estate.